Welcome to Globe Watch with me, Charles Sibuni. We are significantly moving from an industrially based society to an information dominated one. The clocks of history have turned so fast ever since Apanet program transformed the world through the development of the space program, which put the United States of America and the ex Union of Soviet Socialist Republics in a battle of technological dominance that produced today the world of virtual technology, which everybody is gradually embracing. Well, Bill Clinton qualified it the information superhighway, and each and every one of us today has the way we qualify it. Hacking, internet security, terrorism, and all water you can add in that mix. The world is simply being transformed. So today, my guest on Globe Watch explores and combines knowledge from the worlds of space exploration to the use of digital technology in balancing the equation for 21st century development and meaningful societal cohesion. My guest, Dr. Ernest Simu, he was the first African to be on the final list of the United States astronaut program in the U.S. state of Texas and Houston in particular of the famous National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA. <music> Dr. Ernest Simo, welcome to Globe Watch. Thank you so very much, Charles. It is a pleasure to be here today. A quick scientific check enables us to understand that we are moving from an industrial society to an information-based one. Exactly. How is that transformation been done? Exactly. We can probably just uh, step back a little bit and just say, well, you can imagine that at the beginning of uh, the life of man on Earth, the first people who kind of wandered around the planet lived by fishing or maybe hunting and collecting fruits off of trees until one day a wise person understood that by planting a seed you could have in the future a little more than what you had in the past. That was historic in the sense that it started the agricultural revolution and for hundreds of years people who owned the land were the masters of the world and people who did not were submitted to work the land as slaves, literally. About 300 years ago, uh, we understood that machines could actually work, in some cases, much faster and harder than people. And that was the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. And for hundreds of years after that, the rulers of the world, the people who dominated the world, who managed the world, are those who had means of industrial production. And those who could not produce were basically relegated to what I'll call the industrial ghettos of society. About 20 years ago, we really started in earnest transitioning from the industrial-based society, as you pointed out, to an information-based society. And I can't help myself but think that in that world, the, rule, the, the rulers of the world will be those who can transmit information, manage information, process information, and control information. Those who don't have access to information, in my view, will be relegated to what I'm going to term here, or call here, the cyber ghetto. Now, if you are a citizen of a cyber ghetto, I think that it is even more dangerous than being a citizen of the industrial you, you, ghetto. You just spoke about the cyber ghetto. Yeah. This is what in the Clinton administration, President Clinton qualified as the information superhighway period in which we are living. He called him AOL, American Online. Yes, exactly. um, 
what are the key benchmarks of this information-based society? Satellite exploration or a complete digital movement? I think that uh, uh, the, the, the whole transformation of the society in all its aspects, satellite is going to be certainly a very important tool to enable the utilization and the exploitation of the, uh, of the uh, digital uh, communications revolution. It's going to be a tool, and I hope we get a minute to talk about it. But basically, uh, the, the digital revolution touches on every single aspect of our human uh, lives, not only in terms of transport, uh, but in terms of health, in terms of nutrition, certainly in terms of warfare, and in terms of uh, civil society at large. So really, it is a truly parallel organizational system uh, that is very comparable to the physical structure of life that we currently experience. When will you inject more of your resources today? You were one of the first Africans to be selected for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration astronaut program in, in, in Houston, in, in, in the United States of America, in Texas, the state of Texas. I just wonder where will you, you inject your energies today, in the digital world or in the astronaut period? Of course, we are no longer in the era of the Soviet-American uh, uh, battle for leadership of the world. Very good. I would say that actually, uh, well, I was a finalist in 1994 and 1996. I I'm very, very humbled to know that uh, my uh, co-finalist, uh, who actually um, went on to fly a mission, were part of the Columbia uh, mission that we unfortunately lost in 2003. I actually tr uh, trained, I was actually part of that process with the commander uh, who's With the space shuttle? Uh, yes, uh, with the commander of the space shuttle who was uh, okay. commander. At the International Space Station? Yes, uh, yeah, the space shuttle who tr flies to the International Space Station. Okay. Um, but basically, uh, going back to your question, uh, do I have a preference between space exploration and the digital communications? I think that both, really, it's very difficult to choose because the, uh, while space exploration and space uh, research is a fundamental knowledge of humankind and humanity expanding the horizons of our knowledge, digital communication, on the other hand, is a little bit more practical. It's something you can apply on a daily basis, and both do have tremendous impact on people's lives every day. So I try to do both, but I'll probably say I'm spending more time nowadays uh, in the applications of, uh, of a digital revolution. Oh, well, maybe I should just tell my audience that if you are using s cellular phones today, um, I don't know the marks, whether it is Android, whether it is Apple, whether it is Samsung, I, I don't know the phone which you are using, but the reality is that some of the applications and the functionalities of those cellular phones, you develop them and you have the key of the technology in that domain. I just wonder how beneficial is the digital, digital or the virtual world to having a more comprehensive global village today? Uh, that's a very good... Uh, uh, Let's take the agricultural sector in particular. If you consider a farmer in a remote village in any African or world town uh, today, uh, you'll understand that in order to maximize your harvest, you need to monitor the growth of your plant. You need to understand uh, the water table in your farm. You need to find out to connect with distribution channels. You need to understand the rates, since these are usually commodities. You need to understand the price uh, on, of, of your product, of your goods. You need to know how to store them, how to keep them, how to channel them, how to package them. And in some cases, you may be interested to actually uh, channel them through electronic commerce. I, I'm reminded that in the United States, there's a company called Amazon.com. Uh, that uh, cyber market space has forced real retail spaces to close down. For example, this year, uh, hundreds of stores such as Macy's uh, have been closed because they couldn't compete 
with online commerce. So really, depending on the level of sophistication of this agricultural uh, uh, engineer or entrepreneur, uh, there's a, a variety of benefits that uh, can be had. The reality is you and I are coming from a very heated U.S. election That's right. That's in right. which the hacking scandals have served a severe blow to the credibility of the entire system. Yes. You and I live in a world where terrorism, education, is mostly done online. Right. How do you establish the credibility online of making sure that you are working with real people, real companies, in real time situations because the truth here is you are dealing with people you don't know how do you make a difference between the good and the bad exactly that's a that's a tremendous question and it has all kinds of different aspects to it different perspectives uh, one the first perspective is that i don't think that anyone today has the key to be completely safe and protected and secured from cyber crimes it is still relatively a new technology, uh, just like we have in a physical world. There are good people, there are crooks, there are scammers, and so it goes. In the cyber world, we have the replication of those sets of characters. Actually, in a cyber environment, it's even easier to do that because they can hide behind, as you said, a lack of identity or a disguised identity to project a profile which is not truly theirs. Now, going back to your question, how can we truly get towards uh, uh, checking, having a system of checks and balances in order to control uh, or limit uh, cyber criminality? Now, in my view, I think that it's just a matter of having uh, a, a, a good understanding between uh, the countries involved in fighting this cyber crime. One tool would be to have centralized databases, just like we manage international travelers, that you take a citizen from one country, they can travel around the world, they can be identified with biometrics, <laughs> with the papers. Would it be possible to have an online passport system? <laughs> of course, of course. How do you establish that? Of course, because uh, now if we have biometrics, right, if we have biometrics and we have security, because we don't want people to hack into it and do what we call the uh, identity theft, people can steal identity online. If we can be sure that we can preserve the integrity of an individual's identity, then it's a very simple matter. The United Nations states that we are 7 billion people in the world today, yes. and out of that number, at least 2 billion people are subscribed to Facebook That's right. alone. And out of that number, at least 80 million people on Facebook every minute around the world with an estimated 20 million others on Twitter. I just wonder whether the space program has a future, especially in African countries where most of them are beginning to have their space programs. Today you got Nigeria, Gabon, and others. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, in your case, when you refer to space uh, program, you really mean the utilization of probably satellites, uh, you know, sure, of a very sure. near Earth. Uh, sure, 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 yeah. sure. If that is the case, uh, it is definitely an environment that is going to be more and more exploited. Number one. Because even in traditional warfare, somebody who has altitude has an advantage to somebody who's at a lower level. Because you can see them, you can hide from them, and you have a better view, a field of view, which is much wider. So altitude is always a very good tactical and strategic advantage. And a satellite, if you look at the geostationary satellite, it gravitates around the Earth at an altitude of 36,000 kilometers above the Earth. So you can think of this at the ultimate tower at which you have eyes and ears to, to let, see let, what's let going on around the world. Let me just put a question to you. Don't you think that there is an element of intellectual madness today for you guys, especially at NASA, to sit one morning and say that, OK, we have explored a, 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 explored the moon, we have landed there, it is enough for us today, we should look for life in Mars, whereas with all the technology you have developed, you are unable to see where a handful of terrorists are hiding in Raqqa with all the drones that you have, you have developed. You are unable to use that same technology to 
exactly tell people where um, terrorists are hiding in Maga, in Maidiguri. Oh, don't you think there is an element of intellectual madness? It's not madness, and it, it seems like a contradiction, right? It seems like a contradiction. Uh, I can also say to you that if you were to eat pineapple alone as a dessert, it's great. But if you eat pineapple in a beef stew, it tastes a little funny. In other words, when you treat these elements separately, they make perfect sense. But when you start looking in your case of uh, Raqqa or using the drones to identify uh, targets on the ground, uh, let me just put it very generically that it's not that the dr drone cannot find these targets. Uh, I would probably suspect that uh, maybe the ultimate desire of finding the target uh, um, is not optimized, right? So it's not really the machine or the technology not being able to accomplish the mission. It, I will probably say there's some human errors uh, different, at different layers there. Now, uh, as far as exploring other planets or other places, I think it's just a natural tendency of humankind to always wanting to know more than you knew before. Uh, I mean, imagine our great parents who lived in a village. Where would we be today if they decided that we cannot leave our village to go to the next village, or from our area to another area, or from our country to another country? Now, the United States, which is the greatest country in the history of humankind in terms of its economic and military and societal powers and freedoms and all these virtue values that, 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 that are promoted and, and lived uh, was really a, 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 an item of luck, actually, because Columbus was really planning to go to East India and ended up accidentally in, the, uh, in, the, in, 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 in North America. And you 1492. Could, that's right. You can think of that as, 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 as a model of exploration. He, he left the European shores to some unknown place on Earth, which happened to be America, which is turning out to be the, the center of the world today. Now, am I saying that Columbus uh, uh, discovered America as it is uh, usually stated? No, of course. It, it, he did not because there were people who lived there for thousands of years before he got there. But what happened is that he brought the technology, different organizational societal structures that created uh, the, 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 the society system that we understand, that we live, and that we now have adopted in the United States and around the world, that has propelled the advancement of humankind in, into new, new grounds and new field. Some of us today go online, create fake identities. For example, I can go online today and take the name and photo of Ernest Simo and I use it to carry out dubious activities online. And exactly, exactly. Whether through a Facebook account or a, a, a Google account or exactly. a Gmail, I don't know whatsoever happens there. Is there a satellite dish system that can pinpoint and establish people in real life situation for using fake online identities? Not yet, not yet, because the the protocol of using uh, these uh, scams is not a matter of physical action. These are electronic manipulation of binary digits that are embedded into the stream of information. So it's not something that you can see. Somebody can be here typing on a computer. Uh, unless you know the codes that they're actually typing, you don't know if it's a good code or a bad code. So it's even if you had satellite capable of seeing people doing stuff. I, I haven't said that it is not yet. Yes. Will you be an advocate of ending what the Americans call, and which, of course, is moving around the world today, internet neutrality? Because the level of which cyber insecurity is increasing the world over will make everybody to do a rethink. Is that correct? Uh, it uh, will make everyone to do? To have a rethink yeah, oh yes, on, of course. on internet neutrality. Yes. But, but what I, my belief is that when the train has left the station, it's hard to stop it. The digital uh, revolution is extremely fast, extremely flexible, 
because the tiny little kids uh, that are at kindergarten can associate and understand and merge with that technology, which was not the case with the agricultural revolution. Today, uh, people are talking more and more of, of uh, machines that functions without human assistance in whatsoever they will call artificial intelligence. Intel exactly, exactly. How can artificial intelligence be of strategic values to emerging economies today and in the military domain? That's a very d d great question. Easy to answer, but complicated to, to appreciate. Let me start with the complicated part of it. You know, when machine can substitute the action of man, it's literally, ultimately, at the detriment of mankind. People don't have jobs. People don't have anything to do. And the wealth is concentrated to the top of the society by those people who control those tools of, 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 of robotics and uh, uh, artificial intelligence. So we create a societal pyramid which has at its top the pharaohs basically control it. less than 10% of, of, of the, less than 2% of the population of the world control 99% of the wealth of the world. I don't think that is right. Uh, yet, it is the kinds of society that can, are easily facilitated by artificial intelligence. So uh, I'm not very pleased about it, but in terms of is it justified, is, it, is there a rationale for doing that? Yes, it is. Uh, because if I'm an entrepreneur uh, and I'm changing a part on the car that I'm assembling on an assembly line, I know that people, they, they strike, people, they complain, people, they get tired, people, they're demanding. But if I get a robot, put it there, just put some electrons, just feed the robots with electrons, free electrons. <laughs> the robots will be very happy. Oh, oh, like the one that controls traffic <laughs> in the Democratic <laughs> Republic of the Congo. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Where were you when President Donald Trump delivered his inauguration speech? <laughs> I was in Washington, D.C. I was uh, uh, two miles away from, from the Capitol. You heard him midway in his speech say that there will be two rules in America under his presidency. Buy America, hire America. Mm -hmm. Expertise knowledge like yours that work in NASA. Uh, I used to work there, but let, 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 go ahead. Good. Imagine that you are still a NASA employee mm -hmm. and you listen Donald Trump say that, mm -hmm. will fear be part of your life? No, I, I don't think... That you'll be moving back to Africa since mm -hmm. foreign expertise will not be needed. No, I don't think, I, I honestly don't think that uh, that was the tenor or the intent of his declaration. Uh, and I think... But y you see what is happening to Google, to Facebook, to to, to Tesla, to, yes. to, to Ford, to yes. General Motors, I to, 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 to all the giants, oh, the because visa, the travel, the visas, yeah, yeah, the because all those guys who, who, were, who, exactly. were, who, who were from Iran, Saudi Arabia, and other Muslim countries who, you know that the majority of these exactly. tech-savvy guys at Silicon Valley are exactly. foreign expert knowledge exactly. being used in America. Will exactly. you be part of that embarrassment? As uh, somebody who studied physics uh, tremendously, I always believe in the theory, the principle, one of Newton's law of the action and reaction. You cannot just look at action alone or reaction alone. Now, uh, those propositions by the President of the United States uh, were basically a reaction to a trend that has developed uh, in the United States for the past 20 years with the uh, uh, globalization phenomenon. A lot of the technological advances in the United States, including the space research or the biological research uh, has been developed by people born outside the United States who became American citizens. If you look at the space program, for example, Dr. Uh, Werner von Braun uh, was really the, the guy who pushed the United States to cross that line 
uh, with Explorer uh, 1. I think that when people start l seeing the, 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 the cons and the pros and cons, the people who are the most affected, the people like the Googles, the people you see, who are being victimized in some ways by those decisions, would start, would start putting economic and political pressures to the executive. Remember, the United States government is not a dictatorship. Can you remember when last a sitting American president sacked a sitting minister? Uh, Donald no. Trump did that to his justice yeah, minister. Yesterday. Uh, no, uh, last a few week. days ago. Yeah. No, yeah, that, that is his... That uh, sounds dictatorship. No, no, no. no. It, uh, if it was in Africa, it would have been a global no, no, no. news it, headline. It, it, no, it actually confirms what I was saying. <laughs> in which way? I said, I said to you that his proposition may not hold water. And because there are checks and balances. Yes. And this justice, the, 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 the Justice uh, Department uh, interim uh, 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 secretary uh, didn't like it. So that's what I meant by checks and balances. That if, if you push the American society too far to the right or to the left, there will be some reaction either from industry or people from the street or people from within your own cabinet, as okay. demonstrated by this uh, young lady. Dr. Ernest Simo, thank you very much indeed for being guest on Globe Watch. Thank you so very much, Charles. It's been a pleasure, and I really enjoyed being on your program. Uh, good luck to you, and I uh, hope to meet you again uh, sometime soon. You're welcome. Thank you, Mike. <laughs>